Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over the new FSLTL live traffic application for Microsoft Flight Sim coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the new FSLTL, how to download, do the install, and more importantly, how to set everything up to have live traffic inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. At the end of the video, for all the VATSIM users, I'll go over where to find the location of the VMR file so that you can enter it in your vPilot application. If you have any questions along the way, please post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Also keep in mind that all the links for today's video will be down in the description, so be sure to check those out. So the first thing that we need to do is to head over to the FSLTL website, and we're gonna click on the download via fly-by-wire installer. Yes, all of this takes place in the fly-by-wire installer, which makes it very, very easy to install all of this compared to the AIG live traffic. So once you download the fly-by-wire installer, run the installer exe application and it should automatically put the fly-by-wire installer on your desktop. Once you open the fly-by-wire installer you should be left with a screen very similar to this one and if you have never used this application before it's pretty easy to use. Over here on the left hand side these are all the different aircraft or applications that we have available inside of the fly-by-wire installer. The one that we're going to be concerned with today is the icon that looks like a little radar screen. We're just going to give that a left click. That'll open up the FSLTL application. And in here, we have two different items to download. We have our base models and the live traffic injector tool. Now, much like AIG, we are able to use this without using the live traffic injector tool, which we'll get into later in the video. But for right now, we're going to download both base models and the live traffic injector tool by just tapping on the install button over here on the right. Once you have downloaded both of these, there's a little shortcut that I want to go over with you for those of you who are using the live traffic injector tool. To start the live traffic injector, you can either come into the fly-by-wire installer and hit the start button, or what I recommend to do is to go down to the about, click on package files, this will open the location of the live traffic injector tool. Now, as you can see at the top here, my address bar, this is not located in my community folder, and that's because I'm using add-on linker. For those of you who are not using add-on linker, both of these, the base models and the injector tool, will be located in your community folder for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, the other way to open the live traffic injector tool is to create a shortcut for the application, take that shortcut, drag and drop it on your desktop. And once you do that, we no longer need the file location open, so we can just exit out of that. And I'm done with the fly-by-wire installer for now, so I'll just go ahead and minimize that. At this point, we can open up Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'll bring everybody back once we do that. All right, so we have now spawned into LAX, and I forgot to mention that you do not want to open the live traffic injector tool until you have spawned into the airport that you want to depart from. Once you have done that, then we can open the live traffic injector tool to inject our traffic. Before we do that, though, there's a couple settings inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator that we need to go over first. I'll also have the FPS counter up here so you can see any performance hit that we're going to take on the system when we open the live traffic injector. So first we're going to go to general options, go to the traffic, and we're going to make sure our aircraft traffic type is set to off. Aircraft ground density, we're going to make sure that is set to off. And at the very bottom, we're going to make sure that use generic aircraft models, both AI traffic and multiplayer are both set to off and the traffic variety at the bottom will be set to ultra. This will make sure that we're pulling all the liveries from the community folder and not using any generic liveries 
for the sim. Once we have done that, we can go down, hit apply and save. All right, at this point, we want to open up the live traffic injector tool. And again, we can do that either by opening the FlybyWire installer and hitting start, or we can just double click on our shortcut that we had placed on the desktop. The first time opening the live traffic injector tool, you'll be left with something like this. Now there is a couple options in here that we can go over and change to get us some better performance or if we're just over flooded with aircraft, we can reduce those so you can at least get one word in the ATC. Down here we have a couple options that we can change either the IFR aircraft, VFR aircraft, the additional parked aircraft that are going to be static, the blocked aircraft removal time, so if we get a bunch of aircraft down on the taxiway and they're all jumbled up, we can set the removal time to get them out of there so that we can get things moving. Lastly, we have the API key for the flightplannerdatabase.com. And this is not a requirement, but if you want to get more accurate flights, then I recommend to go over there, set up an account. It's free, get an API key, and then you can enter that here. So to change any of these settings, all we need to do is to hit the Y key on the keyboard and then enter. This will roll through each of these settings so that we can change them if we like. If we want to change a setting, all we need to do is enter the new number, hit enter, and it'll roll to the next one. If we don't want to change any of the settings, then all we need to do is just to hit enter through that setting and it will just keep the current setting that is in there. Again, once we get down to the API key, if you have created an API key over at Flight Plan Database, you would just enter that right here. I don't have one, so we're just going to hit enter through that. What that's going to do now is start the injection tool, and it's going to take about 20 seconds or so for it to start downloading and loading in all the flights. Once that happens, I want everybody to take notice of the FPS counter at the top right of the screen. Now, as you can see, it's pulling in all the different flights, flight numbers, and the departure and arrival airports. One thing to take note of of the FPS counter is that we had a significant drop in FPS once we started the live traffic injection. At this point, what you want to make sure you do not do is you do not want to exit out of the injector tool. All you need to do is to minimize that and go on with your flight and everything will work as it should. Let's see if we can see any, there we go. And you can see all the aircraft have populated in here. Now what I wanna go over is how to use the FS LTL live traffic without using the live traffic injection tool. So the first thing we need to do now is to exit out of the live traffic tool just by exiting out of that. And you'll see that FPS comes shooting right back up again. So now that that's closed, we need to turn on the live traffic inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator by hitting Escape, General Options, and we're just going to go to the Traffic menu. Here, we're going to turn on Real-Time Online Traffic, and I'm also going to turn on the Aircraft Density up to 50, and again, we'll leave all the settings at the bottom exactly where they were, hit Apply and Save, and then we can go back. So what this will allow us to do now is to use the in-sim live traffic, but instead of having all those generic liveries, we're gonna be pulling all the liveries that we downloaded for the FS LTL base package, and that's what's gonna be on all the aircraft inside of the sim now. But one of the benefit of doing it this way is we don't have that huge FPS hit on our system. But for those of you with higher end systems, it may not matter so much. So now that we have gone through all the different settings inside of the simulator, we've gone over the settings in the traffic injector, I would like to show all the VATSIM users where to find your VMR file for the FS LTL application. Once again, we're gonna open the FlybyWire installer, and then we're gonna head up to where it says base models. We're gonna go down to the about, package files, and once we open this, you can scroll all the way down to where it says the FS LTL rules, this is going to be your VMR file that you're going to enter into vPilot. Anytime there is an update inside of the FlybyWire installer, you want to make sure that you use the new VMR file that's going to be with the update. All right, so that's going to just about wrap us up for today, everyone. 
If you guys have any questions, post them down below in the comments, and I will get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.